Hello, everyone. Good evening. I hope all is well. Happy Friday to everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Wind Down Friday. I'm your co I'm your host, author Erica, and I have my fabulous co-host with me, Kim, um, on this good Friday eve Friday evening. Um, mm -hmm. I hope everybody New Year is going great because my New Year is going fabulous. What about you, fabulous co-host? Oh, fabulous! All right. Um, yes, it's um, it's going up. It's going good. It's going good. It's, we struggling, but it's going good. It's going good. right. But you're still alive. Amen. I'm still amen. here. Yes, amen. <laughs> so today's topic is about it's the little serious sisters. We gonna yes. do a little something serious today. Mm -hmm. Um, something that we really need to touch on. Um, yes. that we all experience suicide, mm -hmm. and we're gonna talk about this. And you know, if y'all have any comments, leave it in the comments below. We we be glad to um hit your bag. Well, let's yes. communicate. Let's talk about this. This is a serious topic that yes. we all somehow affect our family in one way or another. Yes, but that my beautiful co-host. She gonna we're gonna get into this. Yes. Um, I felt that as in going into this new year, that that is something that we need to talk about because a lot of people um are going through it um because of the pandemic um itself and then how you know people are being treated right. and put out of their places, don't have, you know, they don't have a meal. You know, things along those lines. And it's getting to the point now that I'm noticing and I'm getting a lot of different phone calls of right. I'm at my wit's end and I don't know what to do. Exactly. And, you know, I'm not anybody's counselor, but I'm always willing to listen um, and give you, you know, the best advice that I have. But um, always, you know, seek help. But sometimes people just don't even want to go that step further. They just want. You know, they just really want someone to listen to them and, and reassure them that um, whatever, whatever gonna they're going good. through is it, going to be okay. Right. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but uh, suicide is like the tenth leading cause wow. of death. I didn't know and, that. So um, I was reading an article and the article was stating that um, even though right now it's the 10th uh, leading cause, but it's quickly approaching to be in the top five wow. just because of how things are going in the world today. I mean, people um, are dealing with, you know, a whole lot. And some people don't know how to handle, you know, change. They don't, uh, if they're used to being in control of everything and now this is something that they can't control, they're starting to lose it. Right. Um, like, for instance, like just, not going to say any names, I'm just going to kind of just give a little story. Right. Okay. So this, um, this gentleman, younger fellow, I think he's still a teenager. Okay. I think he's still a teenager. Um, he got into it with his mother because his mother now has a boyfriend. Okay. And the boyfriend don't like the son. So since he don't like the son, the mother's like, well, you got to go. So what am I supposed to do? What what skill set do I have? Like you've been, like I work a little job, but it's a part-time job. So what makes you think I can go out here on a part-time job making, you know, $12 an hour that I can afford to live out on my own? Well, you got to figure that out and you got to be gone within a certain amount of time. Yeah. All because the boyfriend says so. Okay. So then, so he, like any, anybody else, 
significant other and you talk to your significant other and then your significant other just sits up there and flat out tell you i just we just can't do this anymore i just don't want to be with you anymore after you told your child you that your child had to go huh i said after you told your child you had your child had to go now the significant yeah. other saying it's time i'm not gonna be here anymore i yep. don't want to be with you yep. no more yep no rhyme or reason just I, I I just don't want to be in a relationship with you anymore. I come to you and I'm confided in you and about what's going on at the home front. And then I tell you what's going on. And then at the end of that, you tell me you don't want to be with me anymore. At that time, at a, in a young mind, your, your, to you, your world has changed. I have nothing to live for. Right. I have nothing to live for. You know, my mother don't want me because my mother is falling behind this man. Now, I don't know their situation. I'm just, when I, I, I don't know it. I, I, I'm I trying not to judge it, but I do feel a certain type of way about it. But As a parent, because you're a parent, you're a parent, so you're going to feel one way or another about the situation because what parent and what mama that carried their child nine months and one foot in the grave and one on a banana peel, you're going to tell your child something like that. Right. Right. I, I struggle with that. And so, you know, he just felt like his life uh, was just over. So he wanted to end it. And he was he had took a bunch of pills and because um, he was done. And next thing you know, I don't know, like I did. not This part became very rocky and I didn't catch that really but he was like he got a phone call from like his cousin or friend or something and he ended up throwing up all the pills and then he just left oh, okay all right <laughs> i mean that's crazy it's it's um it's crazy because i find that a lot of teenagers are um experiencing or they're um dealing with suicidal thoughts and that they're going through so many things and i'm guessing because so much have changed and our worlds really have changed 2020 mm -hmm. have really changed our lives in so many different ways because mm -hmm. we a lot of people was laid off a lot of people mm -hmm. was losing losing family members and all that kind of and especially for a teenager all that kind of become a lot for a teenager to try to handle and mm -hmm. then as an adult as an adult we can't handle certain things you know we we struggle as adults honestly we struggle with certain things like right. me mm -hmm. myself personally you know even with the pandemic i struggle with because i wasn't understanding how we losing all of these people right in months like not days i mean well really that we was losing people and money yeah like it was just crazy so i know as an adult it's mm -hmm. hard especially for a teenager that don't know what's going on and can't comprehend it they those those thoughts start seeping in you know mm -hmm. so that we be with it we struggle, you know, suicide is something that not only in teenagers, us as adults, adults we struggle yes. with it because mm -hmm. we get to the point where we don't see no hope or we don't see no light at the end of the tunnel. It's just so mm -hmm. dark at times. And then we, mm -hmm. we in our heads, you know, we mm -hmm. trying to process everything all at one time. Mm -hmm. Some people don't like to reach out. And I know for us as women, we don't like to reach out and say we need help because we always expect it to be these strong people and mm -hmm. at the end of the day we all the time can't be strong we need mm -hmm. help and that's right. where self-love come in too because self-love is saying i need help yeah but yeah. we not some of us are just not strong and we all we have been taught well you you gotta keep doing it no matter what it is well, suicide is something that's touching everybody home. I haven't, God forbid, I haven't really experienced the whole thing with suicide, but I have known other people that have experienced suicide. My nephew had a nervous breakdown at an early age because it was just so much he was dealing with. But 
not suicide. But suicide mm-hmm. is something that we really like, we really need to get a handle on. And where we do that at, I guess right. the first thing is self love, right? Right. Just asking for that help. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have to definitely ask. You have, and that's the thing. You have to know that you need the help to ask right. for the help. You know, I've dealt with it myself because I have a son who is bipolar. Okay. So he has on several occasions. Uh, I'm going to kill myself. I mean, just goes, just, but that's the part of the whole bipolarness. Because when you don't take your medicine, you know, then you start coming down. And then when you start coming down, that's when Satan comes in and then all these negative things. And then you be like, okay, well, if you just take your medicine, <laughs> like you're supposed to, we wouldn't be here. We, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be here at all. And I mean, like, you know, when I was talking to about the gentleman, you know, um, Um, the, my only problem with that, like I, like I said, I didn't want to judge the situation, but then, you know, I've been in those shoes because, you know, I'm looking at my son and how my son is sitting up here telling people that his parents don't give a fuck about them. You know, they, we, we sleep outside, you know, um, outside in the car, uh, they don't feed us, you know, my, uh, we didn't did, you know, X, Y, and Z. So then you get the people come to the house and we don't know. They come to the house and be like, well, hey, well, well what, what happened now? What, what, what did he say now? What you here for? <laughs> now y'all know dang well, you know, we know that boy needs some help. <laughs> Look how you said that we know that boy needs some y'all know, help. Y'all know that boy needs some help. What you here for? Don't... D- and is and it's like when when you're in those situations, you know, you're trying to look at it from the parent side, and you're trying to look at it from the child side, just because of the fact that you know I was there, I was in those shoes, and I know you know he meant well, but he really didn't mean well. So it's like, did she really put you out because you know she got somebody on the side, or did something get Pretty to this spotless. point? Yes, and now okay. Because if I don't put you out, when you gonna leave? No, already. Because <laughs> you you gotta go. You can't stay here forever. Gotta go at some yeah. point. Yeah. <laughs> so you. So this is my question. You know, where do you think the whole thought of suicide stem from? Is it things that we go through in life, or? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Things? It's, yeah, I think it's things that people go through in life because, you know, another story. So I I dealt with... Story time. Uh, well, co uh, Yeah, I'm sorry. Story time. Yeah, story time. Um, so I've dealt with, you know, different people in different situations and actually, you know, watching these people ask for help, okay? Ask for it. She was beat. She was raped, but because of whatever lifestyle she had prior to that, they take that and they use that against you. But I'm asking for help. Right. So now you want to judge me on something that I didn't done in the past. Right. So now I don't qualify for the help that, that I'm asking my for. So now I laid everything out. And, it, and to me, y'all don't give a fuck. So since y'all don't give a fuck, I don't give a fuck. So I'm tired. And when I tell you I'm tired, I'm tired. So I got to go. Because y'all ain't going to miss me no way. You're already talking bad about me anyway. So what's right. the point? You know what I'm saying? Y'all, I ain't shit to you no way. So you done asked me out already. So Already. So, so let me just lay down and... Let me just go ahead. Shit. I just won't wake up. I mean, I think, um, you know... I don't know. I think it comes back, you know, even with that, just thinking about it, like, is it like you just feel like you unwanted? That's where it comes from, like, just not being wanted yep. by by people that love you. Yep. It's, it's that feeling of I'm not enough. And that's what even I though am. in your mind, 
that you know that you're enough. But when somebody comes to you, mama, daddy, husband, wife, you know what I'm saying? Somebody that you really have that one-on-one -on -one connection with. And I saw, I gave you everything in, all, in my whole world. And now my world that I built around you is now coming to an end. What I have to live for. I have no reason to live at this point. I'm tired. I'm tired of being in pain. And I hear that a lot. I'm, I'm tired of being in pain. You don't know what my childhood was. I fought right. against that. I didn't grow up and I, I didn't try and I didn't try and I'm still suffering. And at therapy, I'm still suffering. It's not enough medicine. And next thing you know, it's turned to hardcore drugs. Then what? You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, then you, then I got all the names. I'm, I'm an addict, you know, the crackhead, you know. Uh, I'm taking pills. I'm doing everything because I'm trying to self-medicate myself just to get cold through the day. Yes. And you got people. I know I know this younger guy. He's a young guy. And he cut. He's a cutter. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. sad. You know, like you see. You see these youngsters, they go through so much and mm -hmm. they don't have people to really help them. Like mm -hmm. he's a cutter. And we actually had a conversation. And I know, sisters, y'all, we veering off for suicide, but I think all this falls under that because at some mm -hmm. point, like he said, he got to the point where he was so stressed and tired, so he thought about it. And mm -hmm. we had the conversation about it, and he was like, he cut because he feel like once the blood draining out, it feel like the pain. The pressure is leaving. Yeah, and the, mm -hmm. the pain and the pressure just getting out. And I was like... No, but you're losing blood. He was like, but that's not what I see. I see the pain is running out. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, damn, you know, he's 15 years old. Mm -hmm. He had he had a baby, you know, at mm -hmm. 15 years old. And the mom, like his mom wasn't there mm -hmm. to teach him. So he was like going through all these emotions. He was dealing mm -hmm. with depression for a while and mm -hmm. he become this cutter. Mm -hmm. And he said he had thought about suicide one time before, but he said he just never got that, you know, that courage, that courage in him because he had a girlfriend that, you know, was by his side. She's 15. They got a baby at 15 and they just had to grow up so fast. So mm -hmm. is because of our living or of the way we raised up at some point is where the whole suicide and the depression and all that comes in at? I think it is, honestly, it's all in a whole. Um, because you'll hear different people tell their story. I, you know, I was raised in a two-parent household. I don't guess that's supposed to make you better. I don't nope. know. But, nope. but, you but I hear that a Right. I, I was raised in a two-parent household. So, you know, I knew this and I knew this and I knew this. And I'm like, what well, they got to do with anything? Because right. if you if you raised in a two parent household, but if you've never been shown love and affection, if you've never been taught right or wrong, what did that two parent household do for you? Nothing. Nothing. Because so, you just had two parents in there that was probably working and doing what they needed to do to take to care survive. of you. Yep. Yes. And, and I mean that's it. I mean the thing with that is we people go through. We don't know what everybody because everybody has their own story. But, every, but we go through different things and it just gets to a point to where we're just tired. I'm tired of being in pain. Even if it's mental pain, physical pain, I'm tired. And when I'm tired, I'm tired. You, you're you not going to understand because I can keep talking to you till I'm blue in the face, but you're not going to get it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So then, you know, it's left up to me on what, how, and what I want to do. You know what I mean? So and what I want to do is just end it all mm -hmm. because I'm tired, you I'm know, tired. and that's where the comp that's where the whole thing comes in. As we talk about our strong friends and the people that don't ask for help, that's where that come in of having someone to call and check on you to say, Hey, mm -hmm. are you mm -hmm. okay? Because some people feel alone. And mm -hmm. when you start feeling alone, depression, and suicide and all that start creeping up on you. Man. So that's why it's important that we check up on our neighbors and not even much our strong friends. Just that neighbor, hey, I ain't seen Betty in a long time. Let me 
let's pick up the phone even if you don't mm -hmm. have betty number hell not gonna bet it though and see what's going on with betty mm -hmm. yeah and, and and that's the thing you everybody's all about me 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 right it it, it takes two i mean but then it kind of you know you struggle with the one-sided relationship you know because i'm always be that one that's checking on you but you never check for me exactly so since you don't ever check for me well screw you it's just whatever girl and Betty's sitting inside feeling alone and depressed and she's mm -hmm. falling into well hell nobody don't care about me so mm -hmm. i'm gonna just go ahead on and pop these pills and i'm gonna call it a day but mm -hmm. people don't realize when they commit suicide they don't realize how it affects, it affects them. everybody else. it mm -hmm. affects everybody around them and i guess they don't think about that because we're not in their head. We don't know how much pain that they're feeling or what they're going through at that time. I'm going to tell you what they think. They think is, well, you're not ready to tell me how you feel. If you told me I wasn't shit, you told me you didn't give a fuck about me, you told me the X, Y, and Z, so it don't matter if I'm still here. Right. So that's, that's where all that, so that's, I mean, that's where it comes. It don't matter. I don't care. It's like, fuck your feelings because you said fuck mine. Right. So why? So why? So it's whatever. I mean, I've when I listen to people, and I've I've known a couple of people who actually have taken their life, you know. Um, but when you listen to the story and you're looking at, you know, the reason, well, well, that's not, and you got that's not. Oh, now you got every goddamn thing. I didn't say hey, I ain't meant for it to be like that, but motherfucker, you should have made it clear. Right, but you didn't. Because your pride is in the way. So since right. your pride is in the way, now she gone because your pride is in the way. Exactly. People, what you say the power is the power of the tongue. That, yes. It's, the, it's, it's power in that thing. That's why sometimes when it depends on what type of conversation it is, I sit back and I be quiet. Just because of the fact that I don't want nothing to come out of my mouth that's all fucked up. Because it can't come out fucked up, and I don't want it to come out fucked up. So let me think about it. Come back to me, because I guess the rambling, you know, it might not be good. And I didn't mean it that way, but it came off that way, and that's not what I'm trying to do. So let me think about it, and let me approach it a different way, so we we can still be cool. Because we might not be cool if I just start talking. I'm just saying. Yeah. So I mean, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we we have this suicide thing. How do we go about fixing some of the problems? Like, how do we go about um, helping people that's in suicide positions or even thinking about it? You know, do we show them, do we find out what's going on with them and show them a little bit more love? You know, just kind of uh, make sure we checking in on them, making sure we doing the right things by being there by their side to encourage them that, hey, you're not alone. You you have somebody here with you, you know, because you're thinking about suicide, but do you really know how it's going to affect the people around you? You know, and that's something that they don't think about, I guess, because they be so caught up in the moment and in the pain that they're feeling at the time. Yeah. Um, to be honest I with you, you know, like, I'm 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 feeling like shit. I'm down and depressed. Hell, I don't want to think about y'all. You know, like what about right. me? You know, I guess they're feeling like what about me? I'm over here. I'm hurting. Hey, do you know I'm hurting? Do you know I'm feeling like this? You know, whatever. You know, and why should I feel about how you feel at the end of the day? Because if you made me feel like I was appreciated, I probably wouldn't be in this predicament. You know, like not necessarily, and I and I say not necessarily because I what's his name, Robin Williams. Nobody had a clue. Wow. Yeah. Nobody had a clue. He carried his life every day, even though we. I think they said something about they knew that he was like bipolar or something along <laughs> those lines. Correct me if I'm wrong, but. Nobody knew. Nobody knew. He carried on just like nothing was wrong. Nobody knew. He did everything that he was supposed to do. Nobody knew. And that's the thing. Like, they keep it so, you know, some some of them who thinking about suicide, they keep it so tight to mm -hmm. where you, like you said, he kept it so tight 
to where mm-hmm. nobody knew he was he was feeling this type of way. And it just, you know, it just happened. Yeah. So I think it's important that as um, family members that we know if we have other family members that's struggling, I think it's important that we check in on those family members that we know that are struggling mm-hmm. and having hard time or even some of our closest friends that we know that's having a hard time and just not mm-hmm. saying anything, you know, hey, you it's not that you impeding in their privacy or anything, but hey, we just checking in just to see. So, sisters, if y'all right. experiencing or uh, know anybody that's out there that's having a hard time, that's struggling, that's that's just not saying anything, let's check on them. Let's make sure that their mental health is good. They're not thinking about suicide because during this time that we in right now, yeah, we may be in 2021. But we still having some aftermath of this coronavirus pandemic. People are still getting put out. People are still not ha- having jobs because I know here in New Orleans, they didn't shut down a lot of our bars and stuff. So people are not back, not having jobs. So it's important that we check on our family and friends that we know is struggling during this time. Yeah, we in 2021 is true, but let's make sure they all good, you know, and if y'all have any ideas or anything on suicide or if y'all have experienced suicide, let us know in the comment. Let's talk about mm-hmm. it. Let's get it out there because we just never know who have some information that can help somebody else that's listening right. to this or reading the comments. So right. let's check on our family members and friends and make sure yes. they're all in good head space right now. So we're going to also, mm-hmm. you know, my good co-host, she going to give us some good statistics on a sign on suicide. Right. Um, I want to also throw out there, too, that we do on Wednesday, on Wednesday at six o'clock, um, we do we have a support group um, that we so anybody is welcome. It's an open, you know, is it's like it's not recorded like this is recorded, but that uh support group is not recorded no, so whatever probably. you say yeah so whatever you say in there it stays in there so most definitely um so you can come to that um you can which, which email they can email was it to the max records at gmail.com or give a sister a hug at gmail.com just email one of them we'll get back to you we'll yeah, definitely, see you know we'll yeah we'll send you the link to get you to come on in so we can have this open discussion on Wednesday. Um, But the warning signs of suicide. So bear with me because I'll be looking down because I don't remember all about my. So I'm going to look at the phone. Okay, so warning signs, threats or comments about killing themselves. That is the number one um, thing to look at, especially when don't care what the situation is. If somebody sits up there, sits there and say, I'm about to kill myself, you need to stop what the fuck you doing. And you need to listen. And don't think it's not, okay. not to listen to have a response. Just listen. Listen so they feel like they are being heard. Um, social withdrawals from friends, family, and community. I mean, you know, right now we in a pandemic. I mean, and I, this is and this is part of it too. We're in a pandemic. So if you're used to uh, going, let's just say Big Mama's house every Sunday. Now you can't really go to Big Mama's house on Sunday because you, you don't want to give it the the Rona. Like I get big it. Mama. Like I told you, yeah, Big Big Mama. So I get it, and I know the holiday because the holidays were different for me. I'm you know I'm used to having something. Right. You know, me too. Um, it was going different. somewhere. You know, and we kicking it. You know, for Christmas and the Thanksgiving, and and this <laughs> year was just like. I'm sorry, I'm just Zoom wasn't it for me. It just mm-mm. it's not the like, same. I spent, I spent my Christmas in um the hospital with Mama, so yeah, it was yeah, a whole big difference. So yeah, that is different. Um, if they have um dramatic mood swings, I mean, you kind of have to pay attention to that too. Um, just because if you know the person could be one, if you know the person has mental any type of mental illness bipolar and not really adhd but you know adhd kind of falls into that a little bit 
but you know, um, schizophrenic or anything like that, if they have a drastic mood right. change, you need you need to look into that. Um, if they're talking, writing, or thinking about death, I mean, unless they say they're thinking, you would know. I mean, if you just kind of, you know, let's just say it's a, a child and they're just walking through and you just see some doodles, you know, or some things, you, you need to question that. Right. Um, impulsive or reckless behavior. That's me. I have reckless behavior. <laughs> um, aggressive <laughs> behavior. That's me. I'm aggressive. I need to make sure you're okay. Yeah, yeah. And then increase alcohol and drug use. I mean, well, only you know, you know, if if you know they if if they're drinking all the time, then you kind of look at them like, okay. Oh, see, uh, even the if they even if they're doing something like, if you know if you know Betty ain't never drink, and hell, every time you see Betty now, um, sus. <laughs> she girl, she turned up. She turned to the side. <laughs> Um, okay. what's, yeah, what's, what's up with that? What's going on? Right, what's like, mean, girl? I'm feeling good. Uh, 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 nah, mm -mm. you ain't never drunk like that. Mm -mm. So, uh, girl. let's talk about it. Yes. So, um, that's like the warning sign. So then it says how to talk to someone who is feeling suicidal. So it says during the conversation, make sure you, the person that's listening. Stay calm and speak in a reassuring tone. You know, sometimes those black people, you know what you about to do. This is just like, mm -mm. we need to cut that out. Because I'm one of them. With, okay. Let me bring it back down some. Um, okay. What's going on? To listen to them. Right. You know, okay. Listen. Listen. Don't go listen. down with that aggressive attitude because some yeah. of us can be so of aggressive. Course. And sometimes, you know, some of us are just so passionate. Yeah. And we go yeah. there like, what? Da, 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 da. no. Because I, I care up. about you. Because I you love gotta, you. You got to bring it down a little yeah. bit. Yes. Yes. You do. Um, you need to acknowledge that their feelings are legitimate. You No. Nobody wants to hear. I didn't want to hear as a parent. I didn't want to hear that my son was suicidal. Didn't want to hear that. But I would also didn't want, you know, I mean, we don't want our kids to have any type of, you know, ailments. Oh. Okay. Um, offer support and encouragement. So, again, this is what we're here for. You know, we're not therapists. Say it again. We're not therapists. Because we need our own therapist. Yes. But you have somewhere you can go and talk to two ladies on any day during the week, but we have a support group on Wednesday, you know, that, you know, you can come on in and talk to us and we could, what is it? Was it midday, midweek? Midweek, wind down Wednesdays. Yes. So we checking on each other to see how our week is going on Wednesday. And then on Fridays, we, you know, we, we just find a subject, talk about it, and yeah. Um, and then tell them that help is available and that they can feel better with treatment. I mean, you know, in the black community, y'all need to know. They're talking to somebody, a therapist, talking to you, talking to not your cousin and nut nut me. Uh-uh. You need to talk to somebody you giving you no advice. <laughs> None. Well, you get to talking to nothing on them, you gonna commit something. Girl, <laughs> and yeah. we trying to prevent that. We, 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 yeah, we not. If you know you can't talk to your family or you don't feel good about talking to your family, then you need to find you a therapist. And if you don't know a therapist in your area, reach out to me because I got some for you. Trust and believe, I got some <laughs> for you. Because uh, we we trying to get you better. So you can, so because once you feel better, you're going to do better. And then and you're going to come out here, you're going to shine. Just don't forget about the little people. You know what I'm saying? Just don't forget about us. You know, give us a <laughs> shout out or something, you know? Yeah. Right. So, 
that's that's our nut that's the whole thing in a nutshell. We we yes. want to make sure that um we check on our people, make sure they're in a good head space, make sure their mental health is together, make sure we we want to try to prevent suicide as much as possible because it is on the rise and we're trying to slow it down. So mm-hmm. sisters, if anything you need, just hit us up. Um, you could catch me on Instagram at Two the Max Records or. Give a sister a hug, and you can also catch Kim at Quality Day Foundation if you need any kind of resources. She'll be glad to help y'all. I'll be glad to help y'all. I'll do much as I can, but we need to slow this suicide down, and we need to check on our people that's dealing with suicide because it's just not going to end with just one phone call. You know, be right. aggressive. You might have mm-hmm. to, hey, come stay with me for a while. You know, right. we want to slow this down, and we want to try to get a, a a hand under our on our mental yeah. health. Because right. mental health is very, very, very important. So yes. with that being said, sisters, if y'all have any questions, comment them down below in the comment. And we're going to talk about it. We're going to chat about it. And if you, you leave your message down there and you need help, we're going to also reach out back to you. So with that being said, thanks from y'all from tuning in. Um, fabulous co-host, you have anything before we close out? <laughs> Don't. So you have any last words, my fabulous co-host? Y'all bless yes. her heart. Bless her heart, y'all. Bless her heart. Bless it. Yes, bless it. Um, if you if you need any help, just reach out to us, you know. We we, we... okay, so I just want y'all to know that at the end of the day, you are needed and you are wanted. And we care about you. Even if you think nobody care about you, we care about you and we love you. So just reach out to us. We got your back. Talk to you. Got your back. You know, just call us first. No, email. You can call. We might get your call later. Email. And we're going to talk about it. Okay? Just email us. And we got you covered. Get that off you. So I want to say before we close out, yes, we do care about you. We do love you. If you need help, just just reach out to us. Yeah. Um, I have no problem with listening because sometimes I know that's all it takes is um having a, that listening ear. Mm-hmm. I might not can't I might can't solve all your problems, but I could damn sure listen to what you have to say and it be no mm-hmm. non judgment and vent. But Mm -hmm. think about it before you um, make that move. Think about how much you're going to be missing out if you have family or even if you have kids. Think about it before you make that move. And, Mm -hmm. and, And it hurts. It really does hurt the people around you and your family, especially your kids if you have kids. So before you make that move, reach out to someone. If it's not us, reach out to somebody and talk to them and get help because we don't want you to make that move and it's just not that time yet it's not the right move not at it's all. not the right move yeah so with that being said thanks for tuning in to wind down friday i'm your girl author erica and i have my fabulous co-host kim and y'all have a great evening and be on the lookout for next week's show and we love y'all take care Bye.